Hello and welcome to my Starts and Crafts. I'm Libby and today I'll be sharing three ways to use your background stamps. Um, here are the cards I will be making today um, with the three techniques. Each, uh, each card has a technique. Um, for, for today, I will be using this background stamp that was in the My Monthly, um, the My Monthly Hero Kit for April, I think it was, this year. But you can really use any background stamp that you have. I just happen to really like this one. Um, I'm going to start by anti-static powdering the whole paper, um, the whole page really well. Um, and then I will ink the stamp up with this Versamark ink. Um, any clear embossing ink will do. Um, and then I'm just going to stamp that on there. And I will um, make sure it's really good. When I am stamping background stamps, I like to use a press like a tool like I have here to help get um, even pressure over the whole thing. Um, I'm using an air puck, air hockey puck thing, but you can use whatever you want, the Debbie tool or something else, or even your hands. Just make sure to get good pressure over it all. Um, I think I'm going. I think I'm using clear embossing. Um, powder for this one but you can also use white if you want um, for this technique it really doesn't matter um, even if you wanted you could use a colored embossing powder or a gold or a silver and this would re look really cool as well um, I just decided to use um, clear today um, I'm going to heat set that I do like to put um, the paper on this uh, positively everything tool um, when I'm heat setting, uh, when it's a full panel, because um, it just helps keep my hands um, from smudging it or from getting um, heated and it just helps keep it in place. It's also heat resistant or um, like heat proof, I guess. So um, it's totally okay. Um, so next I'm going to, uh, this is kind of a two techniques um, because the first one I think I um, accidentally lost the footage for or whatever but it's the exact same thing over so you don't really need to watch it twice um, but anyway I'm stamping two of these the same way to start with um, I'm going to be using Kitsch Flamingo Distress Oxide ink for the top right corner on the stamp here it will actually stamp the top left um, just so that you know that and I'm going to be using an ink blending tool just to um, kind of make the line blend and not be so harsh. Um, I find that it really helps when you're trying to get a blended look with stamps. But you could also stamp this in one color of ink and it will look really cool as well. Um, here I'm going to be using uh, mustard seed ink. Um, and again, I'm blending the lines on both sides. Um, and in the middle, this will create a nice orange, so you're getting um, more of the rainbow and more colors that way. Um, I do like to wipe off uh, the ink in between um, colors just to keep uh, my ink pads fairly clean. Um, so I will stamp the last one in uh, salvage patina, and that will create a nice green um, in between the yellow and that blue, um, which again will create um, a nice rainbow effect. So this is the one of the techniques. It's just the um, just the blended ink or one color ink. Um, for your background stamp. The second one requires you to keep the paper in the misty, which um, is really important, and then stamp over it with um, the uh, Versamark ink or embossing ink that you have. Um, and then it is important that you use clear embossing powder to heat set this uh, so that you can uh, trap the color under the embossing powder. Um, so I will just apply that over the whole thing and again, I will place this on the positively everything tool while I heat it up um, I uh, am just going to heat the whole thing um, And this looks really cool. Um, you can do just one color if you want or you can create a really cool blended look with whatever colors you want um, This is a, just a really great technique for pretty much any stamp that you have. Um, I'm just using it with background stamps today, um, but sentiment stamps with the ink blended look is a really great option as well. So next, it's a little different. I'm going to be blending on black ink this time. Um, and this um, is kind of a cool different 
thing that um, you typically don't think of, um, but I'm going to be using black ink with a blending brush. Um, I found that I just washed out my brush really well and it did not contaminate anything else um, that I was trying to blend this blending brush with. I do only have two blending brushes um, at the moment, so I just had to work with what I had, but um, this worked really well. I find that the application of ink is a little bit light and a little bit on the gray side, but I still found it to ink up very well. Um, the uh, embossing powder does get a little bit foggy when you blend with um, black powder or black uh, ink, not powder. Um, but if you take a cloth with a little bit of stamp cleaner or some cleaner on it, um, it takes away most of that. Um, and yeah, you can see I had a little bit of embossing issues. I didn't see that it wasn't stamped um, in some areas, but I found a way to just cut it off and use it in a little bit of a different way. So this is similar to the last one. I'm going to be using all the same inks, so Kitsch Flamingo Mustard Seed and Salvage Patina in the Distressed Oxide inks. And these I'm just going to be using a domed uh, blending foam with this ink blending tool. And I'm just going to blend between these colors. The more ink you get on the page, uh, or the more yeah ink you get on the page, the easier it is to blend um, between the colors. Um, so I'm doing a similar blend um, from corner to corner diagonally, um, uh, just like the last one. Um, and then I'm going to come in with the salvaged patina. This is the one that I just stamped with that clear embossing powder at the beginning there. And I'm just going to be ink blending on this, um, but this would look really cool with um, a gold embossing powder or something like that. You can also use layering stencils, which gives you even more options if you'd like. Um, and uh, if yours comes with layering stencils or you can mask off areas as well. So next I wanted to show you this part of the sentiment. I ink blended a little piece and then cut this amazing die out of it. Um, I then cut both of the dies, the shadow and the regular die, out of black cardstock, and also off camera I cut just the shadow layer with this. I'm going to glue the um, the outline that I got with the black cardstock onto the solid one, and then I it is important that you keep all of the inside pieces for this. It's kind of like an inlay technique, um, and I thought um, I should share this sentiment. I didn't do share any of the other sentiments on camera, but I decided to share this one. I will then inlay all of those little pieces into those little spots um, on the, uh, the uh, sentiment there. And this just gives a little bit of a different look um, and helps to coordinate your sentiment with um, your uh, with your background stamp. Um, here, I'm going to I cut this one down um, so that it's five and a half long, but it's like a little bit shorter on the sides. Um, and uh, so some black cardstock shows. Um, this is a black card base. It's a two sized. Um, and I just cut this amazing die um, out of holographic cardstock and some vellum for the back layer. Um, and I embossed a sentiment or the UR sentiment onto some black cardstock. Um, really simple. And I'm just going to add it there near the, the bottom um, in the center. Um, and it really allows the background to shine, but gives a nice bold like um, like focal point for the card as well. So I'm just going to be using Barely Arts glue for that. And then to uh, finish it off, I'm going to be adding a little pink heart to the, uh, or like in between the Z and the G um, on that sentiment. And I thought that just finished it off really well. So this is the completed card for you to enjoy. Um, next, I am going to be using the one that we ink blended with black on, and I'm just going to place that one um, onto one side there, kind of. Um, this is the one I had to cut off some of it um, for it to look right, um, but I think it turned out okay in the end. So I did the same thing with the sentiment on this one for the last one. Um, 
uh, so it's the same kind of thing. Um, I'm going to be using some foam tape on one side so that it's even with the um, background that we used on um, there. And then I'll just use liquid glue for the other um, part uh, there. Um, so I just had to cut little strips so that it would fit behind the words or the letters. Um, and so, yeah. Once I have that, I will add the liquid glue. And I'm going to place this one near the bottom of the, uh, of the card. And then I will again add a little sentiment there. Um, this one I did it in white just so that it would stand out from the background a little bit. And this one I uh, have, uh, I use the sentiment have an and then birthday. So the whole sentiment reads have an amazing birthday. Um, and I think that's just um, fun as well. And then I added some little sequins um, here um, onto this card. Um, I just kind of tucked them in where I thought and I tucked them behind the sentiment which helps connect the piece a little bit more um, and connect the card and the different elements together um, a little bit. Um, so once I have that, this is the completed card for you. Um, this is how it turned out. And I think this one is um, kind of unexpected and you don't uh, think about it all the time. Um, I will try to link the video that I got inspired from that one from in the upper right corner if I can. Um, then for this next one, um, I have a, or I have that piece that's just the um, ink blended cardstock. And then I'm going to put that amazing uh, one that we inlaid, uh, or the amazing sentiment that we inlaid there um, near like a little bit lower than the center. Um, and then I will just add a UR um, little sentiment strip there um, to complement this sentiment. And then I wanted to add embellishments to this one as well. And so I'm going to be using those pink hearts again. Um, I'm going to be using more this time. I'm going to have them like cascade across the card. Again, it just connects it um, a little bit better. So I'm just going to place them and then I will add some liquid glue to glue them down. I tend to like the five embellishments, two, um, uh, one with a set of two and one with a set of three. Um, this just helps, uh, I find that it's really pleasing to the eye, especially odd numbers. Um, so yeah. And then here is the completed card for you today. And those will um, uh, complete the three ways uh, to use background stamps. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and come back next Tuesday for a new video. If you are interested in any of the supplies I used today, check the description box below. For more inspiration, please consider liking and subscribing and for even more inspiration and updates, check out my Pinterest and Instagram accounts at my starts and crafts. Have a great day. See you soon.